Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for this Euro intervention on air. I'm here with uh, Alaide Kiefo from Milan. Hello, Alaide. Alaide, Hi, just, Alaide just shared a uh, position statement from the EIPCI regarding the performance of uh, elective cardiac invasive procedures during, during the COVID-19 outbreak. It's a very nice manuscript and we are eager to go in more in depth with Alaide on this topic. But before we start, I would uh, like to ask you all to participate in the discussion. You can uh, send us any messages you want on Twitter using the hashtag EIPCI on air, uh, sorry, EIG on air, and we will answer all your questions after the first 10 minutes of discussion. So back to you, Alaide. Tell us more about the rationale of this paper. How did the idea come? So first of all, thanks, Nicole, and thanks uh, to uh, Aero Intervention Online to give us the possibility to discuss on this uh, topic. It was a great effort from all EAPCI working group. We involved also the president of uh, national working group. The rationale was that we learned the lesson from the first wave of pandemic. And the lesson was that, unfortunately, uh, because we, it was completely unexpected, as all of us know, uh, in the first wave, uh, we left behind some patients. Uh, mostly, uh, we had uh, to take care about COVID patients, and despite uh, uh, we tried to treat uh, the emergent case, uh, most of elective case was left behind. And we have literature demonstrating that uh, when you leave behind uh, uh, elective cardiac procedure, especially in some of the cases, uh, this is going to be paid by an higher morbidity and also mortality. So the rationale was uh, to learn from the lesson and to try for the different waves of uh, pandemic coming. Uh, and unfortunately, at least in Italy now, we are at the beginning of the third wave of pandemic uh, to not uh, leave behind any patients and uh, to try to prioritize patient and procedure. And clearly the, the, um, the paper is mostly on uh, regions uh, of Europe that are at the present time severely or moderately affected by pandemic. So this apply mostly uh, to okay. them. So you seem to insist on the classifications of interventions is it right? So did you, if I understood well, by reading this paper that, by the way, is available on Twitter if you want to download it. So um, you basically classified the procedures according to the time lapse that we can wait for, right? Yes. I mean, maybe we can also try to share these uh, uh, online. Let me see. Okay, so here on these slides, you have the classification that uh, we try to do. Uh, we followed also what is available on ESC, because clearly this is a position statement from EAPCI under the big umbrella of European Society of Cardiology. So uh, we, uh, we thought that one of the important points for elective procedure was to prioritize patient and procedure. This is clearly have uh, to go accordingly to also the healthcare system of that particular region. So we divided according to the clinical condition, the urgent procedure uh, under the umbrella of elective clearly to be performed within days, semi-urgent to be performed within less than three months and elective that could be performed beyond three months. And this was taken into account uh, ischemic heart disease, because for example, urgent where all PCI for CCS for angina or left main or last remaining conduit vessel uh, PCI, or also PCI for patient with acute heart failure uh, for ischemic cause or PCI of non uh, IRA um, in STEMI patient with uh, stenosis more than 90 percent and for valvular heart disease uh, all the TAVI for the compensated aortic uh, symptomatic stenosis or also TMR for the, compen the compensated uh, uh, mitral valve uh, uh, disease and also for example valve in valve again for the compensated. Uh, 
uh, and then there were also other interventions. And you... Okay, there was an echo. And uh, semi-urgent, less than three months for PCI, for CCS3, stable angina, or near three symptoms, or proximal LAD, or for symptomatic LV dysfunction, or stage PCI of non-era in STEMI with uh, uh, significant stenosis uh, in proximal segments of major epicardial coronary arteries. But again, uh, TAVI or TMVAR, uh, for symptomatic patients with NIA 3 or uh, more than 2. And then there were the elective, which were all the other kind of uh, PCI. So for us, a key point was uh, um, really to try to identify patients where the benefit to do this procedure was higher and prioritize this kind of patient. Again, in severely or moderately affected region, and again, according to the uh, possibility of that healthcare system in that particular region. Okay. But in case we decided to go for a procedure, what are the pathways that you can you tell us more about the pathways for managing those patients? I guess it starts with a nasal swab, right? Yes, and that's uh, the other very important point. So prioritize the patient, but then safety always first. So mm -hmm. regarding the safety uh, first, uh, uh, we try to design a kind of hospital pathway. The suggestion, because we are talking about suggestion, we are not recommending anything. We are just indicating and suggesting uh, what, uh, uh, according to the experience, uh, is maybe indicated to be done. So, in our opinion, for elective procedure, because again, we are talking about elective patient admitted electively to our hospital, there should be a pre triage of patient and patient should be tested prior to hospital admission. Then if feasible, it's advisable to do swab, to use clearly swab and to use RT-PCR testing before the hospital admission. And according to the result, and then another important point is self-isolation of the patient after the swab. Clearly, again, this depends on regional uh, on, on the regional uh, organization, but when it's possible uh, and after the swab to isolate the patient, uh, and then according to the result, clearly, if it's negative, they are admitted. Indeed, if it's positive, because it can happen, it's positive. If there is, uh, um, the severity is mild, home isolation, indeed, if the severity, uh, I'm talking about the symptoms correlated with COVID is moderate or severe, they have to be admitted into the hospital, but in COVID-19 department. So it's important not only for safety, pre-hospital admission swab, but also then identification of cold and hot areas into uh, in the hospital pathways. So I have a first feedback from Peter. It seems that your slides are not showing. <laughs> so just to give you to give you the information. Um, so um, now that we are talking about the healthcare uh, safety, but also the patient's safety, what did you recommend as uh, safety measures technically when the patients are in? Okay, sorry for the slides, but uh, apparently they were, but you can again download them uh, with the link of our paper. So sorry for this technical uh, issue. Uh, regarding uh, then uh, uh, what we, we can do, I mean, uh, as, um, as according also to the, what we published in the paper, there are different level of uh, guarantee uh, patient and healthcare worker safety. We talk about uh, patient and again, uh, testing, testing is absolutely the key. Clearly, when they are into the hospital, then according to the hospital stale, it's always important to keep all the safety measurements that we know um, and to wear medical masks for the patient while hospitalized. Clearly, medical mask has to be also wear by the patient in, in Calab. Then uh, um, importance of uh, protocols into the hospital and into the Calab and also for healthcare workers, 
the importance of the usage of uh, adequate PPE. Regarding what is adequate, this depends uh, according to uh, clearly the result of the, of the swab. If the result of the swab is negative and the patient is completely asymptomatic, uh, by the way, there is, uh, you can also wear according also to indication of uh, the OMS, just a medical mask. Uh, you don't need to wear something more than that. Indeed, if the patient is symptomatic or you don't have available the result of the swab in some uh, regional, again, uh, uh, consideration, because they cannot do, uh, in that case, again, you have to use uh, the FP2 medical mask, and clearly in both conditions, you have to be use eye protection and goggles. So this is what was uh, suggested uh, in, in the paper. Okay. And uh, so maybe I will try to move, I will have to speed up a little bit to try to answer some questions from Twitter. Um, uh, I was wondering, how's the situation in Italy right now? Are you able to apply? Do you feel that you need to apply these uh, suggestions? Yeah, I mean, uh, now we are in the condition exactly nowadays, in these days of third way of infection. So we need to apply again. The document mostly is addressing uh, regions that are severely or moderately affected by COVID. So since now Italy, according to the different regions, because we have different uh, consideration from the different region. I can talk about Milano region. Milano region now it's colored the dark orange, which in Italy means we are almost to the red zone. So we have a number of infected per uh, 100 of uh, 100,000 inhabitants of 20, 225, something like this. So it's uh, moderately severely affected and we have to apply this kind of uh, indication and uh, in, in the hospital, this is applicable, especially in Milano region. So for example, in my hospital, all the patients are tested prior to the hospital. We have two different words for a patient going to Calab. One word is for, for example, emergency, because my hospital is hub center for cardiovascular emergency, even during this third wave of pandemic. So the patient coming from the emergency room go in a specific ward. All the other elective patients that are pre-testing and the test is negative are going to a cold area in another dedicated ward. So we are applying that. Okay. And were you aware of any uh, infections among the teams coming from the patient or from patient coming from, not really, right? No, I have to say that uh, I mean, let's consider that I'm based in Milano. So as everybody knows, unfortunately, during the first wave, the first to be hit was Italy and exactly was Milano region. So even in the first wave, I have to say that not knowing what we know now, we had only in our team, uh, I think two nurse, uh, one technician and one trainee. <laughs> Nobody from the staff uh, indeed, uh, as doctors were hit by, uh, by the virus. But this was only in the first wave. On all the other wave, but actually we learned the lesson and we knew how to protect ourselves and our patient. We didn't have anybody infected, I have to say. Well, let's go beyond the paper now. Um, I guess when you wrote it, you didn't have any, you, did, you didn't have any, enough data about the vaccine. But how would you adapt now the strategies now that we have some people and some personnel who are vaccine now, who have the vaccine? I mean, unfortunately, we don't have so many data on that. I have to say that uh, we, we are all uh, vaccinated because in my hospital, uh, uh, all, uh, um, I mean, they went uh, through ages. So we all got vaccine uh, and uh, I don't know if I can say which vaccine we have, but we had all Pfizer. And um, we were also tested for serology if we wanted. And so personally, I have a very good uh, antibodies uh, at the present oh, time. Okay. Hopefully, it's going to work with the variants because that's another problem. You know that nowadays there is a substitution and uh, more than half a majority now is from the English variant. I hope uh, it's going to work. 
But again, we don't have uh, data on that. So I know that, for example, in US, uh, reading the news, they are opening to the vaccinated people not to wear masks. But this is not the rule in my hospital. We still are using the same PPE and uh, the same kind of careful evaluation, even if we are vaccinated. And because nice. honestly, we don't have data. We don't have data. And PCR test anyway, right? Yes. I mean, for the patient. Yeah, for the patient, of course, yeah. Okay. So it did not change. I don't know about France. What happened in France? Well, in France, we don't have this much, pa the, enough amount of pati pa uh, patients who had the vaccine. So it's difficult now to change our strategy, even in the personal. I mean, at the beginning, we were only vaccinating people who were more than 50 years old. So lot, a big part of the team didn't have access to vaccine. Now people are getting access, but we can, most of them did not have a second shot. Lots of them didn't have the first shot. So it's too soon maybe to adjust the, the strategy. And for patients, it's even worse. I mean, uh, again, it's, there was a limit of age. And uh, now we have more patients getting the vaccine, especially if they have comorbidities. But again, it's too early to start adjusting the, th the treatment strategy. So yeah, but the same in Italy, it's only healthcare providers. Now they went with over 80. You know, I think the same issue is for all Europe. We don't have enough uh, vaccine, unfortunately. Yeah. So maybe so our... need to, uh, to add something later when we get more information about vaccine, but maybe we will need to update at some point. So yeah, sure. So let me take a check on uh, on Twitter. We had a poll, a poll today. Um, I don't know how if uh, people are still uh, answering. But we were trying to understand if people are able to apply and if I have the feeling that they it is applicable in their countries. And we have lots of yes, which is good news because uh, I mean we didn't go to your last slide, but maybe you can we can get to that. Um, we really, we do need heavy equipments for so many patients, right? What kind of PPE do you suggest according to the clinical scenarios? Yes, uh, so unfortunately, they told us that the, the slide okay. is not, uh, yeah, yeah, is not, uh, you cannot see, but what we were saying is that for, uh, let's say for the patient, uh, uh, it's a medical mask, because uh, um, usually it's medical mask in the, because we are talking about elective, and again, we know that these patients are mostly negative, otherwise they are not uh, admitted, other unless they are severely affected, but they are not going to be studied, they are going just to be treated for COVID. And then again, for the, uh, indeed, the medical staff, uh, it is uh, if uh, we have a negative test, uh, just medical mask, if indeed the, the test is not negative and there is the need to do the procedure, you use FP2. Okay. So I guess we have come to the end of this session. Um, for thank you all for attending and please keep on interacting now that we have we had some uh, more in depth information about this paper keep you can all download it and if you have any more comments you can just use the EIG on air uh, hashtag and we'll be able to answer Alaide is there and I'm there to to answer thank you Alaide for your time and thank hope to see you soon <laughs> Hope to see you soon live. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, have a nice evening. Bye.